Hi there, welcome to the Upcycled Design Lab. I'm so happy you stopped by. If you're new here, my name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. And for today's project, I'm gonna be making a cute little bumblebee plant charm from an empty aluminum can. The first thing you need is one aluminum can for each bumblebee and you want to go ahead and cut the top and bottom off and flatten out the sh uh, sides into a flat sheet like this. And I'm not going to go over that in this video because I have a couple of good resources on how I tear down aluminum cans into four usable parts and also a video on three ways to flatten the aluminum. So I will link to those in the description and for this video we'll just start with the flattened sheet. You also need a couple of small black round beads. I think these are about five millimeters. So you need two per bumblebee. You need some 20 gauge wire. You can use any color you want. I'm gonna be using some silver. You also want some kind of glue and sealer. I have this Mod Podge high gloss, but you could use regular Mod Podge. You need a glue stick, a pair of craft scissors. You're gonna want a small brush to apply the Mod Podge. Some round tipped jewelry pliers a ruler, a little bit of E6000 glue, some metal tape, a small wooden skewer. You need some yellow alcohol ink and black alcohol ink. You also need a little bit of black tape, which I don't have, so I just used a little tiny bit of this painter's tape and some black acrylic paint. You also need this green creativity bead roller and this bead template, which I will link to in the description. This bead template will make two of these sort of oval shaped beads and they will become the head portion and the body of the little bumblebee. They're in three sections so there's a very narrow tapered part and a very big tapered part and then sort of a medium sized piece. So there are three sections to each bead. I'm going to go over the cutting and rolling the beads fairly quickly in this video because I've also made a pretty detailed tutorial on how to make beads from aluminum cans, which I will also link to in the description. So here I'm cutting out the bead template and then I'm using the metal tape to hook the pieces together. I'm also applying a piece of the metal tape to the end of the bead to secure it. And the wood skewer is used to start rolling the bead and then it can be loaded onto the bead roller and rolled into a bead. And as I mentioned before, if you would like more information on how to make these beads from aluminum cans, you can check the description for a full tutorial. Before I add any color to my beads, I want to go ahead and put a sealer coat on them because the ink can cause the tape to fail and then your beads will pop open. So I'm just going to brush on a light coat of my Mod Podge. I've just got my beads on a toothpick with a little bit of hot glue on them or to keep them from sliding all the way down. And then you can stick the toothpicks into whatever you have, styrofoam or I have some old rice here and we'll just let those dry. Coloring the beads is very simple. You just need a small container and I just need one bead of each color. So I'm just going to put each bead in a small container and add a few drops of my alcohol ink and then just shake the bead around and add a few more drops if I need to until my bead is coated with color. And when you've got them coated with color, you can just let them dry on another surface. And once the ink is dried, you want to go ahead and put on another coat of the sealer to seal the alcohol ink. To assemble the bumblebee, the first thing I want to do is cut my wire to length. And I need one piece that is 12 inches long, two pieces that are 10 inches long, and another piece at 6 inches long. I'm starting with my 12 inch piece and I want to just fold it in half. And once I've got it bent fairly solidly, I'm going to go ahead and use my jewelry pliers where the flat part is just to crush my wire into a tight fold. And this folded part is going to be the stinger part of your bumblebee, so you can make that as long as you want to. I usually make mine about three quarters of an inch, so I'm going to hold the folded end 
with my needle nose pliers and then I'm going to twist the loose ends around several times to make sort of a knotted end in my wires. And then I'm going to take my yellow bead and slide both wires through. And your little knot should catch the bead and hold it on. Now this part is a little tricky, but it's easiest if you hold the knotted part with your needle nose pliers. And then you want to go ahead and twist your wires again. Now you don't need to make a knot on this end. You're making sort of the neck of the bumblebee, which uh, bumblebees probably don't have necks, but mine do. So three or four turns. And then we're going to take the black bead. This part is a little tricky to hold, but we want the black bead to fit on like so. And I want to go ahead and bend my wires right at the end of the bead so that it'll be centered so that it sort of fits right in like that. And then next I'm going to take my wires and kind of curve them toward each other. And I want to put the wires through the bead in opposite directions. Now this part is a little tricky. You're going to want two pairs of pliers. And you want to pull the wires evenly so that your bead kind of slides down. You can see I got a head on one side here. So I'm going to kind of even it out. Because I want my bead to slide right down into that notch that I created. If you're using needle nose pliers, be sure not to get your pliers all the way to the cutting portion. You want to just use the gripping part of your pliers. And you should be able to pull it fairly tight. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my round black beads and I'm going to slide one onto each wire. And then I'm going to coil my antenna and I think these wires are a little bit long so I'm going to trim them down to about two inches maybe. You can make them as long as you want to or as short as you want to. And then once I have them trimmed I'm going to use the round part of my needle nose pliers to coil the antenna. And just make sort of a rounded shape like that. So I'll repeat that on the other side. And you should have a piece that looks like this. The next thing I want to do is put the stripes on the body and since I don't have any black tape as I mentioned I just used some painters tape and I painted it with the acrylic paint and then I added a sealer coat just to make it shiny and make sure that the paint didn't peel off of my tape. So however you want to do that if you have some black tape you could try to draw the lines on if you want to I wasn't that bold. So I'm just going to cut some really narrow pieces of my black tape. And you can kind of choo choose how you want to do this, but I like to put one in the middle and then a couple small pieces on each end of my bead. So I'm just going to wrap those around. And if your tape's not really sticky, you might want to put another sealer coat on just to hold the tape on a little bit better. And depending on what you're going to use it for, if it's going to be exposed to any kind of moisture, you're going to want to be sure to seal the tape on there as well. For the next step, I'm using my six inch piece of wire and I want to carefully thread it through the center of my yellow bead. It doesn't matter which end you start at, whichever one is easier, but it should fit through there. 
And once you've got it through, you want to find kind of the center and you're going to bend the two ends toward each other. They don't have to be perfect, but you want the lengths to be fairly similar. And then you're just going to cross them over the yellow bead. And you want to twist them right in the center one or two times. And then I just want to push these wires kind of down toward the back of the bead to hold them out of the way for the moment. So I'm going to take one of my 10 inch wires and fold it in half again. I'm just going to let the wires cross each other and I'm going to try to keep the ends even. As I kind of make a teardrop shape. And this is going to form the wing, so you can make them kind of any size you want. I have mine about a little over an inch long, I think. And once you've got the size you want, you want to go ahead and twist your wires to hold them in place. And you're going to do about five turns, six turns. You want a little bit of length of twist there. And then I'm just going to take my other 10 inch wire and make a similar shape. If you're not sure what size it is, you can kind of match it up to your first one. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to bend my wire right in the middle of my twists here. And I'm just going to bend them over the barrel part of my jewelry pliers here. So I can take the first one, wing and I'm just going to loop it over the neck that I made. And kind of hold it roughly where I want it. And then I'm going to take one wire at a time because these are kind of stiff and you want to make sure that you get them wrapped fairly tightly. So I'm going to wrap two times while I'm holding the wing nice and tightly. I'm going to wrap two times around the neck and then I'll take the second wire and do the same thing. You want to try not to mess up the shape of your wing too much. If you do, you can reshape it. And then I'm going to take my second wing and slide it in opposite direction over the neck, hold it in place, and again take one wire at a time and wrap it twice around, making sure I'm getting it as tight as possible. And so now I've basically determined the top and bottom of my B, so I want to go ahead and make sure that my original wires are centered on the bottom below where the wings are and then before I shape the legs I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of E6000 glue to hold the wires in place and while I'm at it I'm going to go ahead and put a little glue on my round beads to secure the eyes in place as well. I've let the E6000 glue set up on my wires here so that they won't swing around and the legs will stay on the bottom here but for the final shaping, I want to go ahead and adjust all of my wires to make the six legs. And I'm going to trim them down to make them the same length. I'm going to use the end of my pliers here where the tip is a little smaller. And I'm just going to coil a tight coil to make some feet. And then I like to put a little bend in my wires for the final shaping of the legs. 
And like I said, you can adjust the antenna if you want to. You may have to adjust the coils on your legs as well so that your bee will stand up. The back legs need to be a little bit shorter. And once you've finished doing all of your shaping, you've got a cute little bumblebee plant charm. If you enjoyed today's project, please click that like button. And if you haven't already, I would love to have you join my YouTube family by hitting the subscribe button. And you can also select your notification preferences with the bell icon. Be sure to check the description for all the extra resources. And you can also find more information and links to more aluminum can creatures by clicking or tapping your screen now. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.